Well, hello, brothers and sisters. Here I am again, back into the words of Christ. And today I have some controversial and difficult words. It's one where he seems to give us a blank check when it comes to prayer. Now, honestly, I won't be able to scratch the whole surface. And you could disagree with my interpretation and explanation according to the text and its greater context of the Word of God itself. But still, let's uh, approach it humbly to fully understand what is Christ giving as a promise and what he's not saying also. So let's start by actually reading it. It's when he says that um, truly, I say to you, whoever says that this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Well, there you go. The prosperity people are right. You just ask and believe it, and if you have enough belief, then you will get it. That's what Jesus said. Well, first of all, is that the only time Jesus talks about prayer? No, it's not. That's the first thing we need to keep in mind, and we'll go back to that. So please put it on a shelf for now. But second of all, when is Jesus saying that? This is right after the triumphal entry, when Jesus goes up to Jerusalem. Why do we say going up to Jerusalem? Because it was on a mountain. But the temple was on a mount, a mountain. Huh. Interesting. Interesting, he talks about specifically taking a mountain and throwing it into the sea. The representation of the religious uh, reality of Judaism taken away because now Christ has brought a new covenant, a new reality. Temple is no longer necessary. Could this be what he means? As so many have said, when he talks specifically about a mountain being taken away and thrown, that he's telling the disciples, guys, get ready, you're going to be doing something other and have the belief that it will be gone and the temple was destroyed in 70 AD the, the, the place of that uh, a faith of, of religious practice was gone like thrown into the sea in a sense to no longer exist and now it was found within the church Christianity the body of Christ hmm. could this be what he was talking about that might help but then we have verse 24 Again, therefore I tell you, whatever, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be done. It will be uh, yours. Sounds like a blank check to me. But again, I say, uh, let's take everything Jesus has said. In other words, we keep reading. Verse 25 adds, And whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. We see that also in the so-called Lord's Prayer, right? When Jesus is teaching us how to pray and talks about asking for our daily bread and really trusting God to, to provide and to deliver us from the evil one. He then talks about this idea of you also need to forgive, though. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others. So this idea of forgiveness is connected to how we come to God in prayer. You can't just take verse 25 aside from verse 24. It, it comes together. So there is an idea of forgiveness also. Now we take these words that Jesus will also talk about and we go to uh, John chapter 16, chapter 15, where again he'll talk about prayer, but this time it's your prayers will be answered and you can be sure of it if you're saturated in the word. I paraphrase, but... That is what Jesus gets at. He's talking about how his word dwelling in you will make sure that when you pray, you will be answered. We have to take that into consideration with verse 24 of here now. That Jesus didn't just say this to the apostles and that's it. He had so much more to tell them about what it means to pray and to have their prayers answered. And it's about praying according to God's will. Praying according to what God has revealed and having that, the belief that because you said it, I believe you will do it. Not because I think you told me you want that, that I should get this. Or I think I need that. Not the same thing. So we need to take these in consideration. Like I said, you might not agree. 
my interpretation, and we don't have time to go in depth of the richness of verse 24. But as I've said, let's take everything Christ has said on prayer before we take just uh, this one verse and make it say so much more than Jesus never meant to say. And we can know that, like I said, by connecting to everything else Christ has said on prayer. With that, brothers and sisters, study the word. See for yourself. Maybe you have a better interpretation, but maybe be faithful to what Christ has said and the word tells us. With this, be blessed.